it's a special hey. day today because we're reviewing our immediate reaction because it's we're a review. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're reviewing it's the immediate a review reaction. of our reaction. So let me let me recap. The, <laughs> let me recap this review of yeah, our reaction. The Expanse Season 4 official teaser has come out. Yeah. We just watched it. So cool. So cool. I mean, it's cool. I just keep getting full-on Mass Effect vibes Yeah, from yeah. It. I completely get that. But I thought what was really interesting with this one is that they have JFK's speech about going to the moon. Mm. Um over you know kind of playing over a very like as you pointed out a very action oriented teaser trailer yeah so there is a lot happening here but it just looks so cool like they do the sci-fi stuff like the space travel and the ships and all that really well i think well they're willing to go there and i think that's more than than can be said for a lot of programs in general mm. i don't know that's a very generic statement yeah, to make go there i'm not I, you know. <laughs> well, they're willing to traverse like worlds and mm-hmm. they're willing to to make it seem like they're traversing worlds yeah so i think for that reason it's intriguing um as i said like this one's a very action oriented trailer mm-hmm. so i didn't really get too much of an indication i don't know if you did of extra parts of the storyline uh, it looks as if and i it's funny because because we haven't watched anything expanse related in a while i've completely forgotten Oh, Christian, Christian. Yeah, yeah. I was like, Christian looks very glamorous. Yeah, yeah, as always. Yeah, and I was like, oh, she looks like she's in a position of power. I know she always is. But yeah, it looks so remember, like... she's she's now the the top dog on for the UN on Earth now. Yeah, so that's going to be interesting to see um, how that plays into the scenes mm-hmm. that we just saw because yeah. there's a lot of. Uh, spaceships, battle type scenes. Yeah, well, I think that was the, the key or thing journeys. to go. So as we as they kind of journeyed into um, the unknown, so they, that they kind of portal that acted as a, an anti room, anti room really to other portals that can go take them to different parts of the universe. They kind of left um, all being united, although um, it being what you kind of call it like a tenuous alliance, really, or a tenuous peace. Um, but we had speculated when the original trailer had come out that we didn't think that piece was gonna gonna last for too long. Like there, there's now you know a race of resources, a, a race for colonization, and we thought in particular that would affect the belt. So the belt is kind of the the breadbasket in terms of resources in our solar system. But if they're able to access other worlds quite easily mm. um, and, and mine those resources there, all of a sudden the belt, which is an emerging nation, it loses a lot of power. Mm. But we see um, we see in this that there is, uh, you know, there are space battles going on as they're going in and out of that. We're assuming that's between the different factions, so Earth, Mars and the belt. However, we did see some alien craft in there as well, or, yeah. or, or more specifically, craft we that we can't identify as Earth, <laughs> Belt, Up, or Mars. Unidentified flying objects. Yeah, well, it could be, it could be related to Mao. Yeah, it could be. I think the scene at the end of the trailer where all our favorite crew members are sort of venturing through that um, open yeah, yeah. window tunnel. Yeah into what looks oh, yeah, to be yeah, yeah. a different landscape than yeah. what we've seen. And I think that's the thing that most excites me about this. No longer will we be kind of stuck to a um, pretend Tokyo of the belt. Yeah. It's more like something where there's going to be a lot of open plan landscapes yeah. um, and something other than the red desert that we've seen of Mars. So mm. that's going to be really interesting just to see how they decide to do that stylistically, mm-hmm. whether they focus um, on like particular patches of it or whether they focus on like really like broad expanse landscapes. Yep, yep. I'm just going to be interested to see how they do it because I said like it, this is a, a real, um, I guess, experiment for TV. I assume they did it to a certain extent with things like June and stuff back in the early thousands, but this just seems like it's something a little bit... Uh, so which aspect of it, sorry? So I guess like to me, and I can't say that I'm a sci-fi genre um, expert, Yeah. but with tv series to this point Mm -hmm. and i know we've mentioned recently that they have so much more budget with tv series so they can do a lot more with it since amazon has taken over the expanse i just wonder whether because you've got that additional money that there's going to be a real different frontier in how production is done for uh interplanetary and extraplanetary um journeying like this one is what do you mean so stargate or anything else like that was that mostly in 
a ship or in like a particular kind of suburb when they're on another planet? What, where does that take place? Sure. So with Stargate, um, there's a n- so the different locations. So towards the later part of the series, um, Earth had spaceships. Mm-hmm. Um, so there were some episodes that involved that. Um, but they would travel to different worlds using the Stargate. So the Stargates were portals. There was one on Earth and you had a dialer that would allow you to dial through um, and travel between the two portals to mm-hmm. different planets. Yeah, so what? So when they actually showed yeah. what those different planets look like, how did they actually show that? Do you remember whether they had camera angles of like a particular area in a neighborhood on the planet or was it just like huge, vast landscapes? I guess that's more what yeah, I'm interested so, so, to see how so they're going to So a combination of both. So obviously it always kind of usually start out in the immediate vicinity of where the Stargate was. But yeah, it would be, it would be quite... Um, it would be quite expansive in, okay. in some respects, yeah. Depending on the depending on the specific show and the location and things like that. But you'd also have spaceships of the Gould and the and the Asgard, um, the Ancients and stuff like that. So yeah, there, there was it was wasn't wouldn't say anywhere near the quality okay. of what we're seeing here. Yeah. But they did their best with you know it's yeah, it's more I, of a guess. cult following rather than a, a super popular one in the same way that the Expanse is. Yeah, I'm just I'm interested to know how they. I thought it might be a new frontier for how they um, do cinematography out I, in different worlds that they have to now imagine. I mean, I know they've got the source material for yeah, the books. I think it will be because a lot of the worlds in Stargate were just very similar to Earth in that it is, you know, um, it's a planet that is, um, you know, has normal vegetation usually. Uh, otherwise, it would be sandy. Um, it have a blue sky usually um it had a moon or something yeah 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 yeah. so uh, it would be yeah the the interesting part will um i think this is way more again we keep using more expansive in terms Mm -hmm. of they aren't coming so if you think like a stargate would kind of be put up in one of two areas either the where the main population is or a bit outside of a town um what we're going to be seeing potentially by the looks of it is that when they fly in their ship they're going to be landing in all types of random places. So we see some parts have lots of water, some parts that look really dry. But the other interesting part I thought is that, so for the Belters, they've never been on planets before. Mm. So when you see... Um, when like you in s- general, yes. they haven't sort of hitched a ride on a dead star. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you see um, them come down that tunnel at the end, a couple of the Belter guys, they're, they're kind of adjusting um, in terms of oh. where to look because they're not used to having land below and sky above. Yeah, I didn't think of the fact that they were mostly belters in that last scene. Yeah, yeah. And, or, and if not, they'd spent most of their time in space. Mm. I noticed there wasn't... I'm wondering if there's going to be any romance. I, I hate to be very girly, but yeah. I just wondered if there's going to be any romance in this next... Well, we had so so we had a couple of um, romantic uh, kind of interactions... Over the course of the season, so you know, we had Naomi Nagata and James Holden. Um, I don't know, something's going to happen with Roberta Draper and one of the guys as well, potentially. She's from um, Mars. She's yeah, the yeah. Mars girl. Yeah, 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 potentially with the um, Alex, so you know, the pilot who mm. is also from Mars. Maybe Drama and Nagata will finally get to stoke those fires yeah, that I've heard yes. is a thing. Mm. So yeah, I, I think um, th- there's there's a couple of potential ones um, on offer. Well, in, in seen existing ones mature and flourish or go up in flames Mm. i'm not sure in terms of who else they could kind of introduce though so obviously new season we always get uh, some new characters so it'll be interesting to see how that kind of builds out yeah and i think we mentioned before the guy i think from game of thrones or wherever he's from is seems to be a villain character in this one who's the who's the guy from game of thrones i don't know i think he's from game of thrones he just looks evil so he looks like he's from Game of Thrones. He reminds me of the guy from Game of Thrones that's really evil. Which which guy? The really evil dude, Ramsay Bolton. Oh, so the guy that plays Cal Tanner in Game of Thrones. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah, so he's obviously a new, new character and we don't know anything about him. But yeah, it'll be interesting to, interesting to see um, who he's a villain yeah. for. So is he one of Mao's guys? Is he, you know, um, from our solar system? Because the other part that we, that we haven't kind of really touched on or the show has touched on is are we going to come across aliens mm. so we've had the alien being you know from that from that um mm. 
from the blue stuff, but we haven't really come across aliens. So we're going to come across, you know, the people that created this substance and created this gate system. Yeah, well, they haven't showed anything in the trailer that indicates mm. that we'll actually see that, but that would be a nice surprise not to show everything possible in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. I would say just, I was just thinking on that Carl Tanner guy or whatever yeah. you're talking about with um, the villain aspect. It's interesting because most of the villains in this show so far you get an understanding of what they're trying to achieve Mm -hmm. um, and you kind of understand where they're coming from. So you know how it's like a more complex villain where kind of like, as we say, Thanos, Mm -hmm. he's like kind of the best example we have currently where you kind of understand that he's trying to do what he thinks is right. Yep, yep. This Ramsey Bolton style guy, I, I can't see him bothering with trying to explain to anyone that he's trying to do something right. He just seems malevolent. Well, the, the, sadistic. Well, well, that's the other part. So he usually plays like a bad dude. So you're right, in, in, in Game of Thrones, he does. Um, in Man in the High Castle, he does. But he might not actually be playing a bad dude in this one. The mm-hmm. scenes have set him up. To, like what they've shown us sets him up as that. But he might not be. Yeah. Well, the expanse can always surprise us. Yeah, absolutely. Usually to the positive. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, let us know what you think in the comments below. While you're there, hit like. Hit subscribe. And we will see you next time. Bye.